And so in these two passages, Exodus 20, Deuteronomy chapter 5, we see these kind of two renditions of these 10 words of what we call, um, more colloquially, uh, 10 commandments. And that the biggest difference between the two are these regulations concerning Sabbath, that in Exodus, the narrative that Exodus will draw on is the creation event, and the narrative that Deuteronomy will draw on is this Exodus event. And the connection between Sabbath and Exodus will emphasize that act of remembrance through embodied practices, the connection between worship and ethics, the connection between worship and ethics for Israel lived out in their embodied practices. Then we need to pay attention to who is mentioned within the Sabbath regulation, the commandment there that everybody gets to rest. It's not just for those who are wealthy enough to do so. And so you have these chunk of laws from chapter 12 all the way through 26 that are interwoven with exhortations to practice justice and to refuse idolatrous practices. And you will have read that in your, um, on your uh, Deuteronomy survey, that as you see these chunks, you'll go back and forth between how one ought to treat their neighbor and how one ought to function in terms of how to observe specific practices. How to review, how to observe festivals, where do they go, what ought they to do, what sacrifices do they make. And so again, that the concept of justice and worship are brought together here in Deuteronomy, the practices of justice and the refusal of idolatrous practices. And so the connection between Israel's worship and ethics are linked, they're connected integrally and necessarily intentionally. But this isn't just, again, a kind of like haphazard, well, we got to put this chunk here, this chunk here, this chunk here. But again, for Israel, their, the goal, the aim is for them to embody and to reflect Yahweh's just, compassionate, and merciful character to the world. And that reflection happens in their relationships with one another. The relation that reflection happens in the relationships with one another yes it happens in their worship vertically but then also happens in the relationships horizontally and that to note anytime there's idolatry there's just injustice also soon to follow and anytime there's injustice there's idolatry lingering around somewhere and so again it's not just one or the other Israel just has an injustice issue. There's also an idolatry issue. And it's also it's not just an idolatry issue. There's also there also will be an injustice issue, and I'll talk about that more um, later. So as we've been talking about this connection between justice and idolatrous practices, and more specifically what justice looks like in Deuteronomy, one of the things that I want for us to focus on, which we're going to get to next, is the focus on specific groups. And what I want for us to pay attention to as we're, as we're listening, as we're reading, is what is the common connection between these groups? What is the common connection between the groups that we find specifically mentioned here in Deuteronomy? And so what we're going to do, we're going to go through class presentations. You're going to read through an assigned article that's going to be available on Moodle there, which I had um, suggested that you guys have open. And what you're going to do, you're going to pre present five major findings from your reading. Um, and again, there's, there's shorter sections, so don't worry about it. It's not going to take you 45 minutes to read through it, even if you're a little bit of a slow reader. There's two or three paragraphs per, so don't worry too much about it. And you guys will receive extra credit um, for your participation in this, so bonus points. Um, so again, what you'll do, you read through an assigned section of an article. You'll present five major findings and then create, you can create a PowerPoint. Again, just, you can make it super simple, black and white, just something you, you just put together or on a Word document, if you just want to share it with everybody. Um, just, just again, something to help us to be able to, um, that reinforces what you've pulled out from the readings. Um, and then again, you'll be presenting, pick somebody to present it. So. If you're wondering where, again, where these articles are at, you can and will find them on Moodle, as you'll see here. 
alien, orphan, widow, wealth and poverty, rich and poor, some. We'll go ahead, I'm gonna get you guys into groups. And then I'll let you, I'll go through each group and I'll let you guys know um, who's doing what and what reading will you be uh, assigned. All right, okay, so again, feel free to break it up as you'd like. Um, if you guys want to have one person take a paragraph or a couple of people take one section, work on another, um, and then just bring it together at the end, feel free to do so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, um, get you guys into groups. Uh, if you guys don't have your cameras on, turn them on, um, talk it up. If, um, if not, at least let your group know that you're there and participating. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. You guys will have, once I give you guys your, um, your, your section, uh, give it about 20, 25 minutes. So, um, but I'll let you guys know when, when our time started. So don't worry too much about it. Any questions? So, yeah. So again, I'll let you guys know which section you guys are working on and I'll go through each one. So, all right. Do this number here. And for the groups, let's go ahead and start with, I believe it's alien resident. Let me, I'm pulling this up right now. Alien form resident section one and two. Who's presented for that group? Um, oh wait, do I present all of it or can I have someone help me out? Cause we kind of like split the work. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Thank all you. right, so. Uh, it's me and Songi. Okay, so let, me, well, let me do this real quick so we get some share. Oh, and then Genesis and Alberto also. Okay, is everybody sharing? Or you guys got one you're working from? Um, oh, sharing the doc? Yeah. Yeah, that's Songi. He's going to share the doc. Okay. All right, who's going to be sharing? Let me see. Miss, Miss Tenny. Oh, there you go. All right. Okay, you should be able to share it now. All right, go for it. All right, so it translates to, I don't know how to say it, the word. Gur. <laughs> Gur, yeah, I think it, go, I don't know. It, was, it was a little too funny for me. Uh, that's <laughs> what it translates to in, in Hebrew. And it basically just means stranger, foreigner, immigrant, non-Israelite, and all that. Um, and the Hebrew Bible comes out around 90 times. Leviticus uh, takes the bigger part of having the word. And then Deuteronomy and Jeremiah, the word doesn't like necessarily apply to a certain kind of people or race or anything. It's just used, you know, like you're not from that place. So they're going to call you that. That's basically what it means. It has no, uh, um, it doesn't apply to a specific kind of person. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Interesting how it shows up in Leviticus quite often. You would think for that for such a dry book that they wouldn't there wouldn't be much discussion on what to do and how to treat immigrants. That's essentially what aliens are. Those non-Israelites. All right. You said there was somebody else who's gonna be presenting? Was that it? Well, Songi's getting cold feet, so I'll finish it off. So when you were when you're considered an alien just because you you're not from there, or just because you might not have the same beliefs, uh, mm -hmm. at least for Israel, once you joined the Israel, you were responsible for following the laws, both uh, not just by religion, but also you know like the basic laws they have. You know, like yep. I don't know. Just following the rules, basically. Yep. And, uh, all that. Yeah, and then along with that came obviously the consequences for not uh, following the rules. Like one example is in Deuteronomy: um, if you were eating yeast during Passover, you could get kicked out of uh, out of Israel. So that's like one of the rules that that's an example. Um, Put away that bread. Yeah, 
and yeah. that's, uh, that's about it. Oh, and they weren't able to uh, obtain property, and their jobs were usually like low level things like carrying water back and forth or chopping wood. Labor. Good, good, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. So, if, um, next group. Uh, so you guys have the group three sections, uh, three and four, or section three. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Let me. We can share screen, right? Yeah. Let me know if you're able to do so. Okay. I think we also mix some of two into it. The section because we were slightly confused, but. Yeah, you're good. Um, oh, what did I do? There it is. Okay, so, um, so aliens and Pentateuch, um, we went through and we found that, uh, the alien was referred to as a foreigner or someone with native ties, um, uh, and most likely no property. Um, and then also, uh, it was, uh, they were treated, um, similarly or with consideration, uh, similar to orphans and widows within the time because they had no one to care for them most likely, or had no, uh, like connection, um, within the area. Um, and then. I don't know if anyone else in my group wants to talk or I keep going. Yeah, it goes like further down. It's like um uh it's very free when it says that, like where they, like, there were certain times when like um like the like they weren't being like having they were having like certain consideration or like being defended by the Israelites. So like it would say that it said that Yahweh himself would like intervene on the um behalf of the natives in, in order to like ensure their protection and like their um you know like consideration, like among like the other uh, Israelites. Mm -hmm. Even though the Israelites, so that that was kind of kind of cool how like Yahweh himself, like the Israelites, God would go on on their behalf. Considering that they didn't, you know, they didn't have to worship him, but it was kind of like the law. So I guess they did Um, and then like criminal laws and like a number of religious laws, like like including the diets, like like uh, kind of like Aram said earlier too, uh, where like religious would be followed, like they like they wouldn't be able to eat certain things, like even though it wasn't like um. Even though it wasn't their religious law, they were still like obliged to that certain law because they were also like obliged to the good things as well. If that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else wants to go. Um, uh, if not, I guess uh, I'll finish. Uh, yeah, and then marriage was forbidden between uh, the Jews and foreigners. Um, yeah. All right. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, the prevention of intermingling between uh, Jews, between insiders and outsiders becomes an issue, which is, again, quite ironic because what you have um, with Ruth, who ends up becoming um, David's grandma, what you have with Moses and Zipporah, and so you do have some, some things going on there that is quite ironic. Um, and so, but those are special points to note out. That just what's going on there. So that'll be something to pay attention to. But anyway, let's go ahead. Uh, group three, which was um, orphans, section one and two. Go ahead, Elijah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and share. Give All me right. a second. You guys can see it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so uh, this is this is what we gathered from our reading. Um, uh, so orphans and uh, or this is about like orphans and widows in the ancient Near East and in Israel. Uh, it's it was seen as like as as good or ideal um, of a leader to uh, to protect and keep safe like widows and orphans, um, both in in Israel and in and in, um, in the culture surrounding them. Uh, things could get complicated 
in um, in ancient Near East when like a wife or a husband died in regards to what to do with like the inheritance or belongings of of the one who uh, who passed, like specifically like legal um, legal stipulations, like had to deal with what um, like how to um, deal with like like who gets the belongings of of a husband or a, of a father that died mm-hmm. um, and uh, Israel's uh, Israel's care for widows and orphans um, and this the way they dealt with similar problems is different um, oh wait whoops for a sorry about that <laughs> okay as it is, uh, uh, because it's grounded like ultimately in the very nature of Yahweh and his gracious acts on Israel's behalf. And um, somebody else in my group can go for the last couple ones. Um, I'll go. So for the section two for children in Israel, it is said that children also were able to participate in the Sabbath. And they were, they are taught by their parents, like skills and religious rituals, and even their roles. And so for that reason, it is they lose a lot when they lose their parents, like obviously, and because they have it says right here, abs, absent now because of their parents' death mm. would be the instructor and model in many details of life and worship. And also missing would be the legal head of the home and the arbitrator of conflicts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it leaves them very, very vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously you can see why a lot of concern here because again, the lack of social, um, lack of social, economic, and even some, even some political kind of uh, power that they do not have because of not of not having a family to belong to. So, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and go on to the next group that had, I um, believe it was section three and four. Um, if you guys want to, it's because for the sake of time, we've got about six minutes here. If you guys want to share two or three things um, from yours, if you want to do them really quickly so we can get through here. Um, and then we'll pick this back up again on Tuesday when we finish out, finish this yeah. up. Wait, do you want me to share my screen still, or do you just want me to share? Uh, yeah, share your screen. Okay. Let me go ahead and... There you go. Okay. Um, all right, I'll just do it from here. Yep. Okay, so I'll share mine, I guess. Um, t- some other people from my group did theirs, but... Okay. Uh, so with the orphan, um, so we could see that there was a call for, like, justice and compassion... And when I was reading it, it said that um, that well that was seen a lot, like that you know they wanted justice and compassion, and mm-hmm. it said that it reflected like Yahweh. Um, and then so it also says that like Yahweh remained as their def- divine defender, and yep. fought like above everything that like occurred, um, even though there was like injustice and stuff. But he remained, and you know he still came through. For them um do you want me to share more or is that good share that last bit because that's really really important about esther oh, okay the esther okay so esther who had lost both her father and mother was under her cousin mordecai's care um and then she became queen in persia and saved the jews from destruction so you know kind of like rags to riches story yep. uh, with esther because you know she became really important after her like what occurred in her life yeah, exactly. And if again, if we lose the social component to the story of Esther, it can quickly get dissolved into a kind of almost like hyper spiritual God's called you to do this random thing to take over the world. Um, which again, we, we can't miss what, well, one, how God isn't ever explicitly named in Esther. And second, how subversive the story of Esther is that not only is she a woman who is living as a colonized or conquered woman in a powerful empire, the Persian empire, which is brutal. And the third, the fact that she's an orphan who lacks political, economic, and social kind of clout to be able to climb up the ladder in order to become um, this kind of political force that she ends up becoming later on. And so again, the, the fact of, 
what this story is meant to do to um, not only Hebrew imagination, but to serve as this reminder about how God's use and care for the poor and for the orphan is demonstrated here in Esther and how God used this individual, again, who's marginalized to the max and then uses her to preserve all of Israel. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. Um, so we got a few more here. We're quickly running out of time. Um, uh, Widow, section one and three. I can share my screen. Go for it. Let me see. No, I go for it. And again, go ahead, feel free to share two or three of the most important things. Okay. Um, in the, okay. So the protection and care of widows were seen as the responsibility of the gods as they were then to command human rulers to take on this commitment as believed in the ancient Near East. Um, the other two in my group wanted to share as well. Um, I'll go ahead and share one. Uh, I'm gonna flip around over to number five though. Uh, so even past the Pentateuch, God is the protector of widows. Uh, this is seen in places besides the New Testament. It appears in Psalms, Proverbs, and Job. Um, these verses declare the moral virtue of protecting and caring for the widow, um, showing Yahweh's continual, continued faithfulness and interest and care towards this specific group of people. I can take the last one and I go to number three. Um, in the Pentateuch, widows are often viewed as a subject of a lot of family politics. They often show up as characters of importance in several narratives. Excellent. Excellent. How real quick, just a quick question. How common are widows in, in the ancient Near East? Do you ask that again? How common are widows? That a woman is a widow. Good. Good. And obviously we won't. For the sake of time, I won't go too far into it, but because of the prevalence of war and disease, that's why you end up having a lot of widows to, to care for. Um, so let's go ahead and go over to sec, uh, Wealth and Poverty, section three or four. Yeah, that's uh, that's me. I can uh, let me share my screen if you allow that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me go ahead and. Trying to find it. Yeah. So I got a lot of stuff on here. Okay. Okay, so we did the um we did the uh the wealth and poverty, section three and four. And so I'm trying to get rid of this. How can I get rid of trying to get rid of the uh heading for oh, I'm just gonna read it. Okay, so we um from the uh, reading um, God heard cries from the oppressed in society and gave him an opportunity to enter a new way of life, uh, which was the freedom of slave, freedom from slavery by means of the pilgrimage from Israel to the Promised Land. Um, um, so that would be when that would be prior to when the Jews would go through the wilderness, uh, or the, the Israelites go through the wilderness, um, and then so. So everyone was kind of expected to uh, kind of like um, provide like something um, to to God as in like sacrifice something, um, and but because the uh, because the po the poor couldn't, um, people were expected um, not to take advantage of of the less fortunate and kind of had to. Uh, like if they couldn't really co contribute anything, then they'd kind of be like, it's okay, but like they weren't expected to give up much because they didn't have a lot. But the, those who were a little bit wealth, more wealthy um, 
we've had to um, offer offer a little bit more. Um, so the groups uh, of poverty usually include like the widows, orphans, resident aliens, um, and they they were a little bit more exposed to the impacts of poverty. Um, mm -hmm. And their causes of poverty were a little bit varied, so um, it, I guess it kind of depends on the environment and the uh, society. Um, and like I mentioned previously just then, on my other point, um, some uh, parts of society, they were, there was like a series of char charitable acts and legal measures that were designed to aid the poor in their distress because they couldn't really do anything without any help. Um, so the this is one point that Emily brought up. It was a prophetic prophetic literature shows an abuse of the needy, therefore absence of justice. So that kind of like um, kind of corresponds to uh, the law, how the law encouraged those who had material means not to take advantage. However. Um, People still took advantage of them and um, and abused them, even though they kind of shouldn't have. And then uh, the the uh, point that Sarah included was uh, Abraham was chosen chosen as the mediator of God's blessing to all families of the earth, um, which was reiterated to all his descendants. Um, and this blessing works not just um, in a physical manner, but also uh, a spiritual manner. Um, so this blessing was kind of, um, the reason of this blessing was to kind of help maintain the relationship, uh, of the poor with, with Yahweh and kind of like give them some sort of hope to, you know, maintain their faith and trust in God. I didn't want to just read word for word from that as well. Yeah. So I was trying to like make sense of it because yeah. it would have been easy just to read. No. Yeah, you're word. good, man. Yeah, because we all we gotta gotta head out on um, anyway. So um well thank you guys for that. Uh the last group um will go ahead and go on Tuesday. So do save it as some kind of document. Um <clears throat> and then we'll talk through and tease out some of these things, why would these specific groups come up in Deuteronomy? So again, apologize for going a little bit over. Um, well, the Lord will repay on Tuesday. So um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, office hours today will be from um, two to three. It'll be a little bit shorter today for an hour. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to drop by. If you got any memes to share, feel free to do so. If you want to chop it up about Mortal Kombat and kind of disappointing what it was, feel free to come through. So, all right, you guys have a great Thursday